everyone to this amazing event, this milestone. I, uh, I'm speaking with tears in my heart, tears in my eyes, tears of joy. This is unbelievable. It's as if I'm standing or sitting here at a graduation that is really we're going from one to another, from one tractate to another, from an easier tractate, which was not that easy, to a much harder tractate, which we already started. Before we begin, I'd like to mention all of those who are making this seum, who finished, we all finished it together, we all reached this milestone together. And I'd like to mention each one separately. We'll start off with the president of the shul, Alan Birig, Mr. Herb Rubin, who I don't see, Dr. Mike Schumann, Dr. Joe Singer, Rip Schmuel Perlstein, Richie Beecher, Larry Lerman Akayin, Alan Redlach, who's not on, Robert Rosenfeld, Reberic Shapiro, and yours truly. I'd like to ask our Koyen, Reb Larry Lerman, to be Messiah, the end of the Messiah, to the end of the tractate, to finish the end. And more rage, slack age, rage, slack age said, in or shall get in and shall let us, uh, the Koshe Israel, but the Koyen Kenem does not rule the sinners of Israel. Call the Koman in his back, as a Kav. Before we continue with Ahadrin, let me just explain in very short what we're about to say. We're going to start off the first paragraph, first section is going to be that we're bidding a farewell to this tractate, but we hope one day to come back because Torah is infinity, it's infinite, and we always learn something new from it, and we hope to come back. We're not saying goodbye to it, but Emir Tashem will see you again very soon. Also, the word Hadrin in Aramaic means Hadrin Allah will come back to you. That's number one. There's another explanation that Hadrin means glory, Hadar, glory, that the Torah glorifies us. What we learned just glorified us, and we hope to do it again in Mir Tashem very soon. The next paragraph after that, we speak about about Rav Papa and his ten sons. And why does it mention that? Because Rav Papa was very wealthy, and after he finished every track day, whatever he finished, he would make a huge feast and have all 10 sons there. All 10 of his sons would come to every feast and honor their father. And not only that, the greatest honor of their father was they all followed in their father's footsteps and became great scholars. The next paragraph is we speak about the difference between us that learn Torah and those who do not learn Torah those who are a little further away from Torah. And the next paragraph is basically a request, we're beseeching God to this Torah that we learn, this tractate should continue and stay in our lives. And it should have an impact on our lives, on our children, on our grandchildren for the future generations. It's my pleasure to ask Reb Shmuel Perlstein, to say the Hadran, the Hebrew part, and afterwards I'll have someone say it in English. <laughs> Lobo <laughs> 
Beautiful, beautiful, my dear friends. I want everyone to understand one thing. This is a group that joined another 5,000 people around the world. My friends, forget about the word congregants, my good friends in young Israel of Margate, who a whole winter, it was dead here. But twice and three times a week, we joined this group of 5,000 people. We had 10, 12 people sitting in our shul before we had to go onto the Zoom, sitting and learning. And that's our president, Alan Beerig. I'd like to ask Alan to say a few words. It's just been such a wonderful experience to be with everybody and to, to finish it. It's just, it's been wonderful. And I, and I can always thank the rabbi for, uh, for sticking with it and then everybody else also to stick with it and to do this and who would have thought that in Margate, New Jersey, this little beach city that we would be learning uh, Torah like this. I mean, I, I don't think anybody would have thought it, but it's happening and uh, now we're learning another Masefta and hopefully in another year or so we'll be finished it and we can go on to something else. And I, I just think it's a wonderful thing that everybody is uh, enjoying it and that we're sticking together and we're learning it. And you'd be surprised that a lot of the other people are learning other things besides that. Other receptors, even besides this, they've, uh, they've taken on other receptors and finished them in between this. Um, so it's really, it, it's an accomplishment and it's really a milestone that the rabbi brought this onto the community and, 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 and done this. He, he deserves a lot of, uh, a lot of shutaf and a lot of cheers from everybody. So just want to thank the rabbi and thank everybody for sticking with it. And shutaf, rabbi. Shutaf, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. It's my great honor and privilege to ask Harab bin Yamin Hammer Shlita, National Council of Young Israel, to say a few words. It's not just Chagiga, learning on the Sefta is like an entire world to itself. You should all be very proud, husbands, wives, children, grandchildren. This is something that stays with you, not just today, but forever. And you are connected to the greater world of Torah, who is learning now this now, Ashua, and continues on to a much more difficult Sefta, which you will see as you continue and progress in your learning. I will be brief, but on behalf of the National Council of Young Israel and our many branches and the many people who travel through to your wonderful beach community throughout the summer time and think that the only time the community exists is in the summer, we all know much better. We know that the winter, the roots, but what allows them to come and spend time with you is the time you keep the shul going throughout the entire year to see its programming and its success. You should take a lot of credit and be very proud. Uh, this is a community that has a long history and a community that has not weathered storms in terms of the weather, but the ability to be able to build and show growth and that we have to lay it at the feet of your rab, your rug, your Baruch Hasra, and we have to thank him for his effort and his programming. We live in a time where a decision has to be made. We're going through perennials. Look at us. Why can't we be in the same room together? It would have been so much nicer to get in the car, drive down the coast, go down to Margate, sit in the room with you, have a lachayim, dance with your rabbi, give a hug to everyone in the room, 
But no, we've got to do this by Zoom. From not just six feet away, but hundreds of miles away from each other. How difficult that is when you are a Kehila community, especially the one that is so warm that you can see it exuding even through this video. The way we go out of this story, this perennial, this COVID-19, the way we take it that there should be a future is exactly what we are being asked at this time. You took the bull by the horns and continued to learn despite the fact that you were staying home in lockdown and finished not just with a scepter, but with a seum so beautiful and glorified that you're going to carry you to the next Musaf. That is why your story will be written like roots at the head of the shape. Mazel tov to everyone. Mazel tov Rabbi O. Mazel tov Alan Beerich. Mazel tov to the entire shul. And please invite me again for the next chapter in this story. Thank you. Yes, Kaya, yes, Kaya, Rabbi Hammer. Thank you so much. Keeps us sane is learning Torah, and that's the only thing which keeps us normal and sane. So if you have this course to learn together with your tremendous rabbi, that's why you're all still smiling. And I'll give you a bracha to keep it up and continue learning, continue staking. This is the only way we'll go live through this happily and safely. Mazel tov. Mazel tov, Yashikayach, Rabbi Roy. Personally. When this first started, I was reluctant to take part. When the rabbi approached me, I was thinking, like, this, this is crazy, me learning Gemara. It, you know, it was like, never never thought of that. And, uh, and my interest was always in continuing with Tanya, but, you know, this was a group effort. Rabbi wanted me in, so I reluctantly conceded. So, uh, and believe me, the entire time uh, it took us to learn and complete this, I still kept saying to myself, what am I doing? This is nuts. Uh, I've only been coming to shul for two years, and it's like, no way, no how would I ever be studying. <coughs> so this is like a, a 180 degrees. Uh, Here we are, we're all celebrating uh, the completion of our first, first Gemara. We're beginning a second one. Uh, if anybody would walk into my house, my bookshelf is beginning to look like a Talmud of Scholar resides here. And uh, every time I look at it, I say to myself, uh, still, this is crazy. Like, what am I doing? So we've completed it. But to me personally, it, it still hasn't totally sank in. But uh, here we go. I mean, I'm, I'm starting my third one. Uh, the, the group starting the second one. To be honest, and, uh, some of the discussions were over my head, especially when it came to Tuma and Tahara. But I did learn some wonderful things on this journey. First, the learning is very, very tough. But I think it gets easier to understand the more we learn. No matter what, I think we came out of it better people. And as I said, we finished the Gemara. Mazel tov, mazel tov. It is great that great people were committed to this effort of Daf Hashavua. We were over 5,000 participants. As far as we're concerned in Margate, the biggest effort came from our very own Rabbi Oramland. For some of us, this was our first exposure to Gemara, and Rabbi Oramland spoon fed us so we could understand. He has unbelievable patience. I think our shul's reputation was elevated by our learning and sticking to it and finishing it with this seal. I think it was good for us, good for the shul, and Yasha Kalaf, the Rabbi Oramland, who deserves all the credit. Of course, with the always ready assistance of the Reb Rebbiton. She does so much. We all know that Rabbi Ormland and the Rebbiton have great love and respect for the Torah. They have great love and respect for Yiddishkeit. They do bigger Holland, visiting the sick with not only visits, but they always come with the Shabbos meal and so much more. The Rabbi and Rebbiton brings light to all those that they visit. He deserves so much credit for all his wonderful sermons many classes, and all his individual studies. Our rabbi gives us two of the most important attributes of a great rabbi. He can tell a great story to keep us interested, and he can learn a black Gemara. Whatever we need, he does it all. The rabbi always goes the extra mile. He had a very, very tough year this year with illness, and rededicated himself to do much more for Yiddishkeit, for 
the shul and for us Jews in Margate. Huge thank you to the rabbi and the rebbe. We just have to look to them to know what's right. Our rabbi taught us that learning is never done. We go from Gemara Chagiga to starting Gemara Yavamas. Just like on Simcha's cover, we finish the Torah, and on the same day we start all over again. On a personal note, I was raised in a religious home, but I never finished the Gemara, and I've never been a part of the seal. The rabbi brought me to this point, and I thank him. By the rabbi bringing me to Dapa Shavua, I feel I am more connected to Yiddishkeit and to the Torah. Thank you, Rabbi and Rebbetzin. The cold Torah can be heard at Young Israel of Margate. Mazel tov to all my chaverim. No more Amaratsu. No more Amaratsu. <laughs> my mother always said, to all those on this Zoom, cold Zoom, all good things should be yours. Wow. Amen. Yashikaya Sam. Shehechehyanu Vekiyemanu Vekiyanu Lezamana Zeh Shehechehyanu Vekiyemanu Vekiyanu Lezamana Zeh Let's try it one more time. Shehechehyanu Vikiyamanu, Vikiyamanu, Lezamana, Shekhiyamanu, Vikiyamanu, Vikiyamanu, Lezman, Hazza, ready now? Shekhiyamanu, Vikiyamanu, Vikiyamanu, Lezman, Hazza, Shekhiyamanu, Vikiyamanu, Vikiyamanu, Lezman, Hazza, Shekhiyamanu, Vikiyamanu, Vikiyamanu, Lezman, Hazza, Ready, Sam. Lazaman has Shomer Shabbos a couple of years ago, and I started coming every Shabbos, and I would see uh, the Shiva Fred guys learning Gemara. I had no clue what it was about, and I would sit down with them, but I still, I, and, I, and I listened to them. I never imagined that I would one day uh, be doing the same thing. I mean, it just seemed unfathomable to me. And um, I would just like to thank the rabbi and everybody in the group too for because that's what like mike said that really made it that that made it stronger and um it's been just incredible incredible experience i look forward to the next tomorrow we're doing uh, so this COVID thing has brought so much negativity and unfortunate circumstance to everyone but for me and i speak on behalf of my brother and sister and my wife laura and my kids um to have the opportunity to number one connect with my father and my stepmother uh, on this through Jewish heritage and through Torah and through Shabbos services has brought such joy to me and my family. And I can't thank you enough for inviting us to this. And Dad, it's always great to see you, but it's good to see you on Zoom as well. And I uh, I, I hope even when we're all back together now, unfortunately we're we're a bit of a distance away. Even when we're all back together again, I hope that there's some way that we can still connect in this manner. 
uh, because I'm honored to be involved and, uh, and I look forward to it. So thank you very much for involving us and for inviting us to the family and uh, it's good to be here. And congrats to everyone on tonight. Sure. Thank you. Friends. Thank you. Thank you. It was so beautiful and so sweet to hear those words, Hadran Allah, the Titan Allah will come back to you. It was the sweetest sound that I ever heard, to be honest with you, in young Israel. Because when I became rabbi here five years ago, I never dreamt in a million years that I will finish with a group, a Mesechta. I have finished with individuals before, but never with such a group. But what is so special about this group? Forget about me not imagining that I'd be finishing with such a group. The group, most of the group themselves never dreamt in a million years that they'll finish a tractate of Gemara. Forget about finishing it, how about opening a tractate of Gemara? And yet, yet we're here at a seum, and I must say we already started our next tractate. We say in the evening services in Mairiv, we say in the second blessing in the evening services, the Nismach Bidivrei Sayroscha, and I will rejoice in the words of your Torah over mitzvah secha la'olam vod, and with your mitzvahs forever. And then we say the famous words, Ki heim chayenu v'orech yomenu, they are our days, our life, and the lengthening of our days. My dear friends, when something is a necessity in life, and you get it. Do you rejoice over it, a basic necessity? No. I'll give you an example. You get water every day. You need water to live. It's a basic necessity. Do you party about on the water? No. How about air? Do you par party the fact you can breathe? Walk around dancing in the streets? Yippee, oh yay, I can breathe. Basic necessity, I have my air. No, you don't do that. Yet to many of us, Torah is also a basic necessity. And yet, what do we say in our prayers? We're going to be joyous with the words of Torah. Well, my friends, if it's a basic necessity, just like air and just like water, why am I so happy with the words of Torah? It's a basic necessity. So I want everyone to know, Torah is not a basic necessity of life. Torah is life itself. Torah is what we live for. Torah is what has kept us till this very day. Torah has protected us back in the Inquisition and back in the Holocaust. And the proof is, the proof is in the pudding. We are here today. Because of our love for life, which is Torah. I'd like to share a story with you that took place in the Holocaust. There was a rabbi, Rabbi Rafael Davidowitz. He got off the car, the cattle car, and they stripped him of all his belongings. But somehow he was able to manage, just like some people managed to smuggle into the camp a pair of tefillin. Some people managed to smuggle into the camps a sitter. He managed to smuggle into the camp a Gemara. A, one of the volumes of the Talmud. And he was learning it every day. And every day when he went into the barracks, he took it out to one night 
one of the Nazis, Yemach Shamam, one of the soldiers came into the barracks and caught him with the Gemara. You couldn't imagine what he wanted to do to him. But he knew, he knew if someone risked their lives for this Gemara, he knew this Nazi Yemach Shamay knew how dear the Gemara was to him. So what did he do? Instead of whipping him, instead of beating him mercy, without any mercy, what did he do? In front of him and in front of all the Jews, they woke him up and page by page he tore them out. And he put them on the floor and he said, now dance on them, trample on them. And my dear friends, when Rabbi Davidowitz told the story, he said how painful it was, he would have rather have been whipped instead of having to trample over pages of Gemara. No, he went to this hard labor and he, every day he had this job putting together cement pipes, forming cement pipes. One day, while he was at work, he saw these non-prisoners came to do labor in the camp, same labor with the pipes to help them out. But you could tell they weren't prisoners. And they were getting paid. And they were getting fed lunches, sandwiches. While our brothers and sisters who were doing the same labor we're getting small pieces of dry bread. One day, this Rabbi Davidowitz is looking at a guy unwrapping his sandwich. And he sees the sandwich is wrapped in a paper that has on it Hebrew letters. He thought he's seeing things. And this Gentile takes the wrapper off, throws it on the floor, and eats a sandwich. Meanwhile, Rabbi Davidowitz picks it up. And what is it? It's a page of a Gemara. The next day, and the day after, and the day after, every sandwich this guy brought in was wrapped in a page of a Gemara. And what did he do? When no one was looking, Every day he picked up that page of Gemara, of the Talmud, and hid it in one of the pipes. And when he had a chance, he risked his life again. And he crawled into these pipes of cement, and he was learning Gemara. Page by page by page. And what does he tell us? That he finished a Mesechte, he was able to make a Siyum. He was able to finish that tractate. And you know which tractate it was, believe it or not? Tractate Chagiga. He finished tractate Chagiga in the camps. Hiding, risking his lives, risking his life for this. We finished Chagiga. We who never learned Gemara. We never dreamt of it. We saw that you could do it. And it didn't matter on your level of observance. It didn't matter how you dressed. It didn't matter on the color yarmulke kippa you wore. No matter what you were able to Start it, and you are able to finish it. Whether it's on Zoom or whether it was in person in the winter time, it was an unbelievable accomplishment. Honestly, I never enjoyed a tractate Gemara like I enjoyed learning with this group, Chagiga. The camaraderie. Hine matay vomanoyim. Sheves achim gam yochad. We sat together like brothers at the table. 
Richie would bring his chava. This one would bring his chips and this one brought his drinks. And sometimes on a Thursday night we had a dinner. But we had 11 people looking in a Gemara. We had 11 people involved. 11 people, 12 people. People in Cherry Hill, people on the phone, on FaceTime. Everyone was coughing with a passion. They were into it. To me, that was the greatest honor. Not that I finished another Mesefta. That I brought a group together. And a group that I have to be honest, I don't know if there could be a better group. Family, together. It's not congregants, yeah, acquaintances, friends. It turned into a family learning together. And as my good friend, Dr. Schumann said, more than the Gemara, more than anything else, the closeness, that bonding, being together, joking with each other, coming in in a rotten mood and leaving in a good mood. And let me tell you something, my friends. I only live five blocks away from the synagogue. There were people that came from Galloway and people that came from here and people that came from Cape May and uh, Wildwood. Why? Why? To travel all that way, twice, sometimes three times a week, Meshuggah? The answer is yes. We are Meshuggah. We're Meshuggah for each other. We're crazy for each other. And we're crazy over the Torah. The Torah that is ours. You acquired it. It's yours. Chagiga will always be yours. And you know what's the greatest part? Your children and grandchildren will always remember. Wow! We learned, Zaidi learned Chagiga. He understood, he didn't understand, but he learned it. It doesn't matter. So I want to conclude with one thing. We say, Sam said so beautifully, he read, and Richie said it beautifully in English. They toil and we toil. They toil and they don't get rewarded. We toil and we get rewarded. What does that mean? What do you mean they don't get rewarded? I know one thing. People go to work at the end of the week or two weeks or a month, they get paid. What do you mean they don't get rewarded? I go to a dry cleaners. I have a good dry cleaners. I go to my dry cleaners. Yeah, he gets paid. He gets rewarded. What do you mean they don't get rewarded? And what do you mean we do get rewarded? I'll tell you what it means. Says the great Rabbi Yisrael Meir Kagan, the great Chafetz Chaim. He says as follows. Everyone goes and, goes and does their job. You know why? Because it's a means to an end. To make their livelihood. That's how they have to do it. If they don't accomplish what they have to, they don't get paid. Period. Someone sews my suit for me, I get it custom made. You finish my suit, it's good, you get paid. You don't finish it, you don't get paid. It's a means to an end. God looks at us and says, no, my dear Kindalach, Torah is a lot different. Torah, you learn one word, and you don't understand it, you still get a credit for that. You know why? Because you put that effort in. You came from Cape May, you came from Margate, you came from Ventnor, you came from here, you came from there, you came on Zoom, you tried, you sat, you didn't understand, you didn't understand. It doesn't matter. Because learning is not a means to an end. Torah is an end in itself. So we might learn one word and two words and not understand it, but we get rewarded for at least learning it, for being there. And you know what? I can honestly say everyone in our group has grown spiritually, has grown together as a family, not as a synagogue, not as a shul, not as a congregation, as a family together. And 
without you. No, 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 the rabbi has nothing to do with it. Maybe I held the door open for you. You all walked through it. And you know what? You get the credit. I don't get the thanks. I have to thank all of you for letting me do this, for being together. And if there's anything I can do privately for anyone, to learn with them privately, to review with them, to go over it, I'll do it. Why? Because to me, my friends, Torah is life. Torah is water to me, Torah is air. So it's true. I was very, very sick this winter. Really very sick. And Hashem gave me, He blessed me with a second chance again. Baruch Hashem, what can I tell you? That means He gave me an ultimatum. He said, Yankee, you got a choice. You're not doing enough. You either have to do more or come on home, baby. And you know what? I said, I'm not ready to come home. <laughs> I want to do more. I'll do more. And Sam was right. I dedicated my life to do more. And I'm all, I'll always be here for all of you. Doesn't matter how much you do, how much you know, how observant. Remember, my friends, one thing, and this I learned from my mentor, my rabbi, and my teacher, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, a blessed memory. A Jew is a Jew is a Jew. It doesn't matter how we dress, doesn't matter what we do. A Jew is always still a Jew, and a Jew can always grab onto a Gemara, and dance with it, and make it theirs. It doesn't matter how observant. You're going to come up, we're going to come up after 120 years to heaven. And God's not going to ask you, well, did you learn this, 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 and that? No. He's going to say, what you did learn, how much effort did you put into it? How much did you really put into it? And I have to say, to my group, you are the ones who put in the effort, not me. Not me. I'd like to finish off with one sentence. More than adding years to your life, my friends, add life to your years. Be alive. Don't just exist. Accomplish. Get closer to your legacy. This is what's kept us going thousands of years through the Holocaust, through the Spanish Inquisition, through Rome and Greece. Grab onto it. Call me. Drive me nuts. Ask me questions. Rabbi, I don't believe anything. Prove it to me. Challenge me. May we be together for many, many more years. All have good health, happiness, and success. I wish everyone a great evening. <laughs>